Hey Brad, this is so exciting. It had to be Spain, right? Yeah, about time. Um, I was wondering where it was going to be, and I knew it had to be Europe somewhere. I thought they'd bring it back somewhere, but really exciting to be Spain and, and the Basque country, which I love. Amazing place. Exactly. I mean, it's so special. The Basque region in Spain is almost like a different world. And, and all the, so many great chefs come from there. Do you have any favorite restaurants? Yeah, I've, I haven't been to all of them. Um, and that's why I'm so excited to be going back. I've been to Azamendi and I've been to uh, Extaburi. A couple of times to Extaburi. I've been to Mugaritz. I just love going there, staying on the beach in um, San Sebastian, traveling through the mountains and I'm really looking forward to, to going back if we get the chance to discover the region again. Yeah, so what do you take back from traveling and trying these restaurants a bit far away? Yeah, part of it is looking at new, new ingredients afresh and seeing how they do things and, and, and talking to farmers, producers, and, and, and the real camaraderie between chefs who, who, who join up together to experience a week in another country. You get a real amazing little community bond together. And, and that's really special as well, to be able to connect with your professional um, counterparts in, in different places, places of the world. And, and, and some great ideas come from that. Did you, have, did you ever make like a big change after... Uh some traveling, like in your restaurant, in the menu, did you ever make some big changes to? I wouldn't say a big change, but you slowly start to feel a bit of an influence somewhere. It could be the way they prepare an ingredient. It could make you realize what we do so well here. And when you go away, sometimes it's good. It's, it's for, for some good reasons and some bad reasons. Um, sorry, not bad reasons, but for different reasons. So one reason could be that you return to England, um, as I do, and realize, oh, the flavor that we get out of our grass-fed beef <laughs> I prefer more than the way they do grain-fed beef. Then I might see the way they treat their shellfish is nicer than the way we treat our shellfish. So perhaps I can talk to my supplier about the way they prepare it and store it and look after it before it arrives at me, at, at my restaurant, so we can get a, a higher quality of um, a product. And your restaurant is doing pretty well on the list lately. Uh, do, you, do you have any plans for the library for the next 12 months? Yeah, we're going to slowly start to do a refurb. Uh, we're 12 years old now. We haven't really done much to the dining room, a uh, little bit to the kitchen, but we're just going to slowly keep building and keep transforming the space that we have. We've got a very cramped space down in Notting Hill in the basement kitchen. Uh, so we're trying to always look at ways to be um, clever with the, the space that we have to, to best utilize it, to, to look after our customers better. And in London, is there any restaurants or new restaurants that you appreciate particularly lately? Um, I haven't been out a lot lately. I became a dad recently, so uh, my, my going out has slowed right Congratulations. Down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's so many amazing restaurants in London, from somewhere casual like the River Cafe, all the way to restaurants like the Clove Club that appear on this list. There's so many diverse restaurants in London that the, you don't really need to go to too many restaurants um, more than once because you can get um, fantastic Indian Chinese, Japanese, the, the, there's so much choice in London. So that's what's so exciting about living here. Yeah, the, the fact that there's not a super strong British cuisine, you think it helped London become more avant-garde and more diverse, you think? Yeah, it does, I think so. I think there's so many, if you look, even look at the, the amount of influence in all the top restaurants around England, there hardly any of them, or only a percentage of them are British. You know, you've got people from, um, Germany, Japan, and all these people who have come to England and made, made a life for them here, made a life for themselves here, and that in turn have influenced how they've run their restaurant. Like you said, that culture is not stuck in a way you might find in, in Spain, perhaps, or you might find it somewhere in the, the um, countryside in Italy. You know, those sort of like traditional ideals aren't there. So, yes, I think it makes it a really diverse place because of that reason. Yeah, last thing, let's not forget you're Australian, so you must have had a blast in Melbourne. How did it go? It was amazing. You know, Australia did a wonderful job. Tourism Australia really pulled out all the stops. They did a fabulous job of making everyone, you know, from the moment you walked out of the airport, you see a flag up in the street. The 50 best chefs are here, the 50 best chefs in the world, whatever. And um, promoting it, they re the city really got behind it. And from having that dinner on the beach and, and from being able to visit local areas and wineries and and, and spending time in Sydney doing the 50 best talks at the Opera House, all those things contribute to make one amazing event. And that's some interesting to see how it's moved from one night in London with no other really events around it to now becoming a couple of days of festivities. And countries are now really using it as a way to promote their, um, their region for not just tourism, 
um, but all the other things that come with tourism. Yeah, and the last thing, next month there's going to be London Food Month. What do you think we should expect? What, 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 how did you receive the, the program? Yeah, I think London food, food Month is starting to gain a bit more momentum now. We're actually doing a little project from my pub in the Harwood with meat liquor. We're making a, a burger called the Dead Bambi Burger, and that's the way that we're involved with meat liquor and doing a little event for um, a lot of restaurants who are involved in the, in the Food Month. So slowly building, and I'm sure next year will be even bigger and better than it is this year. But this year, I can really feel energy coming from the organisers and, and people are really trying hard and, and making an effort to really put the spotlight on London during the Food Month. Well, thanks a lot for your time, man. Have a lovely day, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.